Well, hello, guys, and welcome to another edition of Youth Group at Home. Uh, I'm going to be sharing one of my favorite songs um, today, so I just invite you to, to worship along with me here. I'm Cameron. If you don't know me, I am the oldest of the Hackett's Bloom siblings. Um, yeah, I'm so happy to be talking to you today. 
Um, and what I really wanted to talk to you about was rest and relaxation and making sure you're taking that time to be productive, finish your schoolwork, set your goals and attain them and take that time of busyness and make it quiet so you can listen to what God has to say and focus on what he might be pushing your, you towards. Um, I wanted to start out with Matthew 11:28. Uh, this is from the NIV version. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And I have loved this verse, especially throughout quarantine, because as, you know, we're not doing anything, we're all inside the house, and even though that order has just been lifted, um, I just found the time of quarantine to be so exhausting. Um, it had a whole new level of challenges that I never would have imagined myself going through. And a lot of people in the beginning, it was like, all we have to do is stay at home. It's not that hard, but I had no idea how hard that was going to be. And um, my family will all agree with you. It was pretty hard. Um, so yeah, R and R, rest and relaxation. And these are, yes, these are the R and R's that I want to talk about, but my, what I want you to take away from this is that you want to rest and relax so that you can recharge to reconnect um, because God is talking to you through this time despite all that you hear and all that is going on in the world God is talking to you and you have to take that time and like close all the tabs that are up in your brain um, if you know what I'm talking about like your computer I have like 50 open right now um, to relax and listen to God and focus on him um so I know like we'll start um the first like part of it I want to talk about is being productive um I know like a lot of ways that I tend to cope with stress is being overproductive or very very underproductive um so like I'll go into hyperdrive and just be like okay I need to get this done, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do that. And I will work for hours on it end, especially if I've been procrastinating. I will just go off and get everything done that I needed to. Um, but then I also go through waves where it's like underproductive and I can't, I just cannot get out of bed that day. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'll get up eventually, but to go to the couch. Um, I can't get out of bed today. It's just, I do not want to check my email. I do not want to do this. And there's, gets this point where it's like, you know what, I'm not going to do those things because they're not bringing me joy. They're not bringing me happiness. So I'm not going to open my email. I'm not going to get out of bed. Um, and some days that is okay. But when it becomes like, so I would notice I would go through like a span of three or four days like that. And that really wasn't good for me either. And then I would have to jump into over productivity to get anything done. And that wasn't really a healthy cycle. Um, so I really wanted to encourage you to take your time of rest and relax relaxation in stages. Spread it all out, schedule it out, um, plan a devotional, do that. I've been doing one through the Bible app, it's great. Um, the Bible app has a ton, and just like doing a 10 minute devotional once a day, it's just a time where you know, you can listen to God and what he has to say, and you can just be in the word, and it's great. Um, so if you're not doing a devotional, do a devotional. Let me know. We can be friends on the Bible app. I'll hook you up with one. Um, and I think taking away certain blocks of time to be productive and then also taking blocks of time to be R&R &R is really the best way for you to be productive. Um, I definitely, they definitely said somewhere that, that is in like some science journal. I remember learning about it in one of my classes where they were like, I said, does, yeah, I'm starting to be a teacher, so. Um, yeah, and then the other part of R&R &R I kind of wanted to talk about was the impact that social media has on all of us throughout this. Um, I really came to realize during quarantine, like social media really is people post what they want you to see. Um, so like during quarantine, I noticed how much less people were posting, like, cause you don't see anyone going out and doing anything fun, at least they shouldn't have been, social distancing. Um, and I, I don't know, I just kind of thought about how much like social media was a distraction too. Um, it's a distraction and it doesn't always show what's real. And you can just get locked down such a 
the long haul of social media, like TikTok. Oh, girl, I have a bad TikTok addiction. It's fine. Um, but things like that, like you just get lost in a hole of them. Then that's the time where you lose productivity. And that's really a time that you could be doing a devotion or something else like that. Uh, taking a walk. So, I mean, I get it. I watch TikTok, but also make sure you're taking that time and that's not taking up too much of your productivity or that like social media doesn't count as rest and relaxation. It's drain. I think it's draining and, um, can be unhealthy for you. And another big problem, I mean, not problem, I think it's, but all of our news comes from social media. I most, like all your grandparents and parents are like, oh, I read this on Facebook. All of my stuff comes from Twitter. Um, and then many people get their news from Instagram and stuff like that. And so recently the whole media has just been um, about the racial tensions in the country right now. And I found it really eye-opening to see how the news coverage of things were so much different than like the original content posted on Twitter and how things were getting cut and it just was portrayed in a whole different light. Um, and it gets, it's hard to detangle everything and it's hard to just come up. There's so many different opinions about everything. Um, and you just, you see it all and you're like, oh. and I know for me, when I saw all the news and coverage of what's going on, I immediately went into hyperactivity and, and like, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to go to the walk. I want to do this. I want to support. Um, and that's important. But especially what they're saying in this fight is, you know, it's a long, steady race. Um, but yeah, with, it's another thing with like social media, like you, in this time, like you want to stay informed and you want to know what's going on, but you also need to take that time back in a way, like step away, make your, your opinions for yourself, um, and listen to God and what he has to say throughout all of this. Like, um, always just be listening especially during a time like this like God is here God is present and he is working and that's so clear to me um, through all the imagery that I've been seeing on social media and in like my devotions of course um, I'm sure you've all seen the post but the one about the 99 sheep um, that one may has me thinking about right now um, but yes so R&R &R, rest and relaxation because God is speaking to you in this time. And it's really important to take it so that you stay focused on your grind and you are able to use your time to the best of your ability and use it to honor God. Because he's the man. He's He's pulling you through everything. Um, and I wanted to read and just off with another quote about, no, quote, a Bible verse about rest and relaxation. It's Psalm 62, verse 1, NIV. And it's truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. And I love this verse because rest, that's what we're talking about. And um, because that's the best kind of rest in God. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's so important. And yeah, thanks guys for listening. Have a good one.